Shalom, beloved. A word. This is the third time <clears throat> that I have tried to put this video out and something just keeps going wrong. I'm going to try one last time. It must be meant to be for somebody to hear this. Shabbat Shalom. Before I begin, beloved, we're going to pray. With two or more gathered in my name, that shall I be in the midst. And I'm going to pray that the Spirit of the Most High comes down and anoints this prayer. Father, this Shabbat, we glorify, honor, and praise you, your word, and your Holy Spirit. We ask that you anoint us and leave a blessing behind as we recognize that all things come from you. We ask this day that your spirit come in and speak through me, that as blessing, I may bless others and they may be a blessing while giving all the honor and glory to you who are so deserving. We exalt your holy name this day and forevermore. And we thank you and we pray in agreement that you anoint this message and let it go forth as your spirit intended and may it pierce the listener's ear as you circumcise our hearts to thy glorious word and spirit. Praise you, Father, and thank you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. Three times, beloved, I tried. This is the third and the last today. Watch. Word says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. The last time that I left the message, it was for the chosen. This message, too, is for the chosen. And I was speaking about praying in tongues. An enemy crept in and wanted to thwart the message. They started arguing, I don't know. How many people may have read some of their comments and may have become confused? I'm gonna go back to come forward. One of the things that I know about the enemy is there's enmity between the chosen and the seed of the enemy. There is enmity. How do we know that? We're gonna go to Genesis chapter three, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking to the serpent, the enemy. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, the chosen, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, enmity, what is enmity? It is between the chosen and the enemy seed. This enmity. 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 <clears throat> it is hostility, animosity, antagonism, friction, okay, animus, bitterness, resentment, hate, hatred, loathing, detestation, malevolence, malice, grudges. Okay, I wanted you to know that because as a chosen vessel, as one of the set apart, many times you can be moving about and you think there are some people with just bad vibes. That's that enmity between the enemy seed and the chosen of the most high. The Lord said it, book of Genesis chapter three, verse 15. Enmity, hostility, animosity, friction. You don't have to say a word. You can walk up. There's enmity there, okay? But he also tells you he's talking to the serpent as he's bringing down that curse. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, 
the chosen. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. The chosen will bruise the head of the enemy. They try to lead, they try to go forward, but that word of life will crush it every time because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But they shall bruise thy hill when they can. That serpent wants to stop your walk, your forward motion, okay? And if you don't know what to watch out for or understand the mannerisms of that serpent and his seed, because of that enmity. You won't understand why they biting my heel. They don't want that forward motion. They don't want you to gain ground. They don't want you to grow in the spirit, to move on up. Victory to victory, glory to glory. It is not a stagnant walk, beloved. And when it bruises thy heel, it is not just a physical walk, it's a spiritual walk. As a matter of fact, the greatest walk you have is in the spirit. But you have these beings, they look like you and me, but they're the seed of the enemy. And they want to bruise your heel to keep you from moving forward spiritually and physically. They want to stop any positive progress. They want to shut that blessing down but the chosen turn around and bruise their head why because the words we speak are spirit and life beloved and they're the living dead there is no life in them when you speak you cause things to become you speak things into existence they just use manipulation they use fear and tactics to try to slow your movements, but you stop their lead. Why? Because you bruise their head, their ability to move forward. Okay, now I say that for a reason. When I spoke about praying in tongues, you have to understand once again, the word of Yahuwah, the spirit is not one dimension, nor is his word one dimensional. First thing we're going to do is go in the book of Mark. Okay. Starting at chapter 16, verse 16. He that believeth, this is Yeshua talk. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. They shall be damned, beloved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, there's no life in them. All right. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, new tongues. Yes, beloved, you have to understand it's not one dimensional. As this attack came thinking that, oh, when you speak to the church, if you speak in tongues, nobody can understand what you're saying. But that's not what I said. I said praying in tongues. And praying in tongues is very fortifying for the person who's praying to the most high when you are alone. Why? We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting at the second verse. For he who speaks in a tongue, unknown tongues, does not speak to men, but to Yah, speaks to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. You're speaking sacred secrets to the all-knowing Yahuwah. He knows what you're saying. When we pray and we don't know what to pray, when the prayer seems to get repetitious, but our spirit is urging and moving in us, the spirit of the most high is moving us. We have that gifting of tongues, beloved. All right. So he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to Yah. For no one understands him, however, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But listen once again, and let's open that up a little bit. 
because we're going to do line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We know that when the disciples were in the upper room and that spirit came down on them and they went amongst men, they were speaking in different tongues. But those particular tongues that the Most High gave them because all things are possible, beloved. The people who were amongst them who spoke in varying language heard the gospel in each and every one's varying language. Those tongues, beloved, remember, it's not one dimension what the Most High can, will, and does do. Okay, so... Wait a minute. I'm going to get it and forgive me. Forgive me as I, I need a moment here. I need a moment. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let me see. I'm going to go and I don't have it here. So I'm going to, I don't have it on the screen. About those tongues. See. Lord's not going to leave his beloved confused. He's not the author of confusion. Okay. When we look in the book of Acts, second verse, second chapter, forgive me. We're talking about the day of Pentecost. Okay. And they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing and mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as unto fire and set upon each of them. Mm. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on now. And began to speak with other tongues. Come on. Wait a minute now. See, we don't want to do confusion. We don't want to do confusion because the word of the Lord is profitable for instruction, beloved. Wait a minute now. We in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as a spirit. Who, what, wait a minute. The spirit gave them utterance. Yes, yes, yes. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. There were Hebrews, Yazraelites, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Hebrews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad and the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. So now let's talk about them tongues. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Mm, mm, mm. So wait a minute. We don't want to see. Yahoo don't do no confusion. We're not going to do confusion. So in the book of Acts, second chapter, Spirit of the Lord filled them. And they went down there and started speaking in other tongues. Yes, they did. Amongst groups but they all heard them in their own language. That's one level of the tongue, because you remember now, Yahuwah is not one dimensional beloved. He can do all things. That which is impossible for man, even a comprehension with Yahuwah, all things are possible. He had them speaking in those tongues, but you see, let's go back to what Yeshua said. Let, let, let's go back, Mark 16. Mm -hmm. Woo. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. Just because you can't speak Spanish or Swahili or uh, Russian or uh, uh, Brazilian or whatever that language may be, beloved. When the Lord want to get that word out, if he'll make a rock cry out. Oh, he can change the speech of your tongue. Come on now. He give you new tongue. Let's take it a little higher. We're going to bring this little spark and turn it into a flash flame and fire. We're going to put some salt on the truth and just bring it. Okay. Don't think one dimension. 
Okay, you chosen, you set apart, you're the elect. Okay. Uh-uh, uh-uh. See, they might try to come bruise our hill, but let's just let's we're gonna do some stomping, put your boots on, because we're gonna crush their head today. Okay, with the truth. Mm-hmm. Now we know it was the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, chapter two. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute now. Book of Acts, chapter two. Woo. Let's go back. Let's go back. Chapter two, verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Yes, yes, yes. As the spirit, the spirit, spirit of the Lord gave them utterance. And there was people listening. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they was in the crowd. Let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit did it, right? Yeshua told them about it. Yeshua told them about it. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Mm-hmm. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. They will recover. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute. Did I lose it? No, no, no. Okay. Forgive me. Starting at the second verse. For he who speaks in a new tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Okay. We talking about those tongues. Okay, for no one understands him. But how's that line up with the book of Acts, chapter two? Hmm. New tongues. He, he, there was new tongues. Wait a minute now. Holy Spirit can do all things. All things. Wait a minute now. Whew. Okay. Mm-hmm. For no one understands him. So they're speaking in a different tongue. They're varying tongues. Mm. Okay. However, in the spirit, whoo, wait a minute now. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to Yah. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, sacred secrets. You're talking sacred secrets. Yes, yes, yes. No man understands him. But the creator of the tongue, the almighty, the all-knowing Yahuwah. See, when you're praying in tongues, this is what I was talking about. Yahuwah. This conversation is between you and Yah. Okay. Mm. Wait a minute now. And I'm not down in prophecy. We're just talking about tongues. Because some people tried to take it into this tiny little ca- encapsulated ideology that makes a person hindered from praying in tongues. But you see, right here is telling you. He's not downing tongues he's telling you when and where to speak it there's some people who have the gift of interpreting tongues but if the interpreter isn't there be quiet hush up okay we let the person prophesy but that's not what i'm speaking about beloved for he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to yah mm-hmm. for no one understands him however in the spirit come on with some sacred secrets he speaks mysteries. Mm. Woo. Now let's go down. He's talking about prophecy and prophecy is good. He who speaks in tongue in a tongue edifies himself. What? This is what I meant about spiritual exercise. When you are alone and you're praying and your spirit is urged to, to pray, but you're thinking everything I'm praying sounds repetitious and sometimes it even sounds self-centered. Wait a minute, but the spirit get up in there. Now, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Wait a minute. So what do you what do you mean edify? Where is it? We need the definition, Lord, of edify. Edify. Here it is. Edify. Okay. To educate. You speak in sacred secrets. Wait a minute. To instruct. Mm-hmm. To develop to improve, to uplift, to elevate, to enlighten, 
to make you better. Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute now to teach. So you're learning something. Wait a minute. In the school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go back now. He who speaks in the tongue edifies himself. You're building yourself up in the spirit. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And you know you're speaking sacred secrets. Why? Because you're not speaking to men. You're speaking straight to Yahoo. And the spirit of all truth will test, start testifying in your spirit, leading you into all truth, even about those things which are to come. Hmm. We go here, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? See, you start spraying in the spirit. If you're not already experiencing it, and it'll get stronger, okay? The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Mm -mm. But whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. When you know what you know, when you know what you know, beloved, as a chosen one, you got to watch and pray. Yes, beloved, yes, yes, yes. That's the tongues I was speaking of. But the tongues vary. If we look at the book of Acts, at that time, it was needed and necessary. And they did understand in their own language. But by the time we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul is talking about a separate situation. He's not negating the fact that when you pray in tongues by yourself, that this is between you and Yah, only Yah. You're praying in the spirit to Yah and the sacred secrets and you're edifying yourself. That's the prayer I was speaking of, beloved. Yes, yes, as a chosen vessel. You see, and I'm not going to go into it because like I said, this is the third time I tried to make this video. The first two times, I don't even want to discuss it. It, 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 it can be frustrating, discouraging, and you know, a lot of other negating situations, but I've thrown them behind me. Those things that so easily beset us, how I, I threw it over my back. Okay. Um, but I wanted to go into the fact about the enmity about trying to bruise your heel, your, your, your forward movement, if you will, okay? When Yeshua was talking to the crowds, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were trying to trap him with words. It speaks of it, and forgive me, I believe it's in the book of Mark chapter 12, they literally were trying to trick him with words. They were using words. Okay. I'm going up. I've, I've got Bibles and this up. So forgive me if I'm kind of all over the place. Stay with me. Okay. Um, but they were trying to trap him with words, trick it up. Like, 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 like the devil did, like, like the enemy did when he got in the garden and started talking to Eve. Thou shall not surely die. They play that little word game. They do the little word thing. They want to trick you up and, and remove the truth, if you will. Okay, they were talking about the resurrection. And when the dead rise, whom they were talking about this woman that had been married to seven brothers because one died beyond the other after... Each one married or trying to leave seed, you know, to carry the family name on for the brother that preceded them. And then they all died, as we know that story. And they asked them, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? They were trying to trick him and trap him and trap him and trick him. And when the dead rise, and first thing is you, you err. First of all, Yah is the Yah the God of the living and not the dead. You see, the enemy tells you who he is. Yes, they do. And you got shows out here called The Walking Dead. They are already dead. There's no life in them, okay? They are damned. You don't think so? Let's go back to Mark 16. 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. They are damned. The living dead. When we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at the 16th verse. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. I got the book in front of me. I just can't keep pulling up all these streams. That's part of what gave me problems the first time. So just... First Thessalonians chapter four, starting at 16th verse. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Remember, there's a play on words here. The sleeping in Christ, there are no dead in Christ. They are sleeping. Just like, and I believe her name was Tabitha, the little 12 year old girl that her parents thought had died. And I mean, when Yeshua, when Yeshua came, they laughed him to scorn when he said, she isn't dead, she's sleeping. Okay, he put everybody out. And he raised the little girl. My point being, that which is alive never dies, beloved. They're sleeping. So when you hear these words, you have to understand some of the words have been changed. And because of our concept of dead to us, the dead is dead. Okay. But they are sleeping. They are not damned. There are other people. They ain't even tasted death as we understand death yet. And they already dead. They don't walk in dead. If you were to go to a prison, some men that are marked for the death house, some men that are on death row, okay, they literally call them dead man walking. I'm telling you, a lot of the, the signs and uh, uh, the, the, the images are before us, but we're so distracted intentionally that many times we don't see the signs for what they are. But just like if you were in a jailhouse on death row and man's going for walks, so dead man walking. Well, when you look at people who do not believe, you are literally looking at the walking dead. If you want to get deeper, they're the damned. How do we know? Let's go back. He that believeth not shall be damned, beloved. They're the walking dead. But those who sleep in Christ, those that in this life look like they passed on, they look like they dead. The true term is, I'm um, back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in the 16th verse. Okay. And the sleep in Christ shall rise first. Those that we consider dead, they rise. See, all the dead folk ain't going to rise that we consider dead because they damn. They ain't getting up. Those that sleep in Christ is getting up, okay? And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall ever be with them. Now, here's the other thing about this particular verse, beloved. When you hear the word clouds, when you hear the word air, okay? Let's go to this. That's a spirit, okay? Um, it's a breeze, it's a covering, a divine presence. These interpretations, they say clouds, they say air. If you've ever been praying and the spirit of the Lord come around you, that divine atmosphere, that power, there's a shift in the atmosphere, the spirit comes in. You're not caught up in the clouds, you're caught up in that spirit, okay? In the, in the, the soul in the mind, wait a minute, wait a minute, in the divine presence, it's a covering, like the Shekinah glory. If the, the Shekinah glory came around you, beloved, all right? Now, let's go back. I was talking about praying in tongues when you're alone. When you're alone and you're praying in tongues, you're praying sacred secrets, and you are speaking to the Most High those sacred secrets, but you're edifying yourself. It's, a, it's not a one-way situation. You're edifying yourself in the spirit. Your revelations come stronger, okay? Paul speaks about it further in the Bible where it opens up a doorway for him. 
it opens up a doorway. So I, I don't want to keep going it from book to book to book because it can kind of get confusing. So I don't want to do that. Okay. But you have people that they want to try to trick you and trap you in the words. Okay. No, no, beloved. I was simply speaking of praying in tongues and what it'll do. It edifies you, beloved. Now, as far as the signs, there is enmity between, just like you said in Genesis 3.15. Do I have it up here? Because I got a lot open and I need to close it so I can get some order here. Genesis 3.15, Yah is cursing that serpent. He's talking to the serpent. Okay, let me see if I can open it up. I want it free, forgive me. Let me go back. Okay, maybe that'll be better. 315, right. Okay, I'm gonna go to 14, just to keep some order here. And I'm gonna highlight it. There you go, right? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou has done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, who? The chosen. And thou shalt bruise his head. Okay? Enmity, hostility, rancor. Okay? between the two of you. So when your beautiful light comes shining and some people just get all crazy and funky acting, you're probably around that enemy seat when they get jealous. You're talking about the living damned. How do we know? Okay, because Yeshua told us. Yeshua told us. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Damned. You have the living dead walking amongst us, beloved. The living dead walking amongst us. And I was speaking of praying in tongues. But you also have that enmity as a chosen. There are blessings upon you. You're speaking things into existence. You know your words are going to be challenged. If they did it to the master, they, if they did it to the teacher, they're going to do it to the pupil. And just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees tried to trap, trap Yeshua in his words, even though they were not successful, they're going to try to do it to you. They will try to trick you. They will try to cause you to fall away. They will try to hinder your walk in the spirit, your growth, if you will. Okay, that's what they will try to do. How do we know? Y'all already told us he put enmity between us. They will try to bruise our heel while we're crushing their heads. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in them, beloved. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping that this comes through the way I wanted it to come through. But again, this is my third time, beloved, my third time. You are chosen. You will know things. Why? Because you have the kingdom inside of you, that glorious spirit of the most high, testifying to your spirit, leading you into all truth. He didn't say some truth. As a matter of fact, let's take a good look at that. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. That's why you can get in some places, look in some faces, and I don't care how well they smile. You know, that thing right there is the enemy seat. Okay, you start getting a read and the words start coming to you. You start seeing visions. You start knowing, you know, when you know what you know. Why? Because he told you the spirit of truth has come. He guides you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hear, that he shall speak and will show you things to come. Things to come. Things to come. Okay, beloved. One more thing. Forgive me. Let me see if I got it. I want to make sure. Okay. So many of us, we can get around some people and they're trying to come near us. They're acting all crazy. Some of them truly have devils in them. 
Remember what he said. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You see, beloved, we got to walk that walk and move on up a little higher. This is a word. We got to watch and pray. Watch and pray, beloved. Because greater is he who is in us. He guides us. He walks with us. He talks with us. We have the power to speak things into existence. We know things when everything around us says that's impossible for you to know. It didn't even come to pass. It already came to pass. Yahoo is in and out of time. We're from the eternal realm. Time is measured on a continuum as a starting point and a stopping point. Eternal is forever. We're in the eternal. We sit in heavenly places. We sit in heavenly places. I wanted to expound on this a little bit more. I hope that I did. I don't want to be long-winded. Like I said, this is the third time, the third time, okay? May I all add a blessing to the reading of his word, to the hearing of his word, to the listening, beloved. This Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, beloved, a word 